Good evening, mamas. This is Devin from Homeschool House Calls, and we're with Susan and Jennifer. Y'all say hello. Hello. <laughs> Tell them where you're from. Uh, Susan, you're not muted. <laughs> you're muted. What happened? Oh, no. Okay, Jennifer, you announced yourself. Well, no, okay. Uh, I am you should know Jennifer by now. Yes, I'm Jennifer. I currently live in Citronelle, but uh, I am not from Citronelle. I grew up in Jackson, Alabama. So um, I, I teach classes on out school and I also do some writing and I'm looking forward to sharing uh, the practice of hookah with everyone tonight. Yay. So Susan, you got your voice back? Oh my goodness, what's going on? Okay, Susan is from Homeschooling Supermoms and Solution Point Learning. And she is like, part kind of like my partner in crime because we get up to all sorts of shenanigans. And Jennifer, we go way back. We started, um, We've I don't know, how many years have we known each other? At least close to 15. Yes, it would have to be. Okay. Yes. We, know, we have known each other for like centuries. And she's, I guess you could say she's kind of a retired homeschool mom, but she teaches now. So she's not really retired. She is what happens when we retire. Susan and <laughs> Jennifer is what happens when you retire as a homeschool mom. So thank you, Jennifer, for coming and talking to us about homeschool hygge. Yeah, hygge. I'm excited. So, okay, let's start. All right. Tell us well, about it. Everybody can just get comfortable because that is a big part of Huga. And I'm going to share some slides. So we'll see if they'll share like uh, we want to get them with. Let's see. Here, let's see. Did it show? Let's see. I'm looking. I'm trying to talk to Susan. Okay, Susan, see if logging out and coming back will let you come back in. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sounds like a commercial. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So if our slides are showing, um, this is going to be about adding Huga to our homeschool. And you can add it into your home, just like you kind of think about your homeschool and your home mm -hmm. being almost interchangeable sometimes. Um, and it's not necessarily about gathering a lot of things. It's more about being laid back and introducing an atmosphere in your home that promotes warmth and coziness and comfort. And it can be done any time of the year. But of course, with winter approaching, we tend to start thinking about this kind of stuff a little bit more in the winter time. And I'm thinking too, this can be very helpful for the January and February uh, burnouts that happen mm -hmm. for us sometimes. I remember when I was homeschooling, February seems to be a difficult month. So introducing Hugo will be, um, I think, very helpful to you. So in our workshop tonight. I first of all want to talk a little bit uh, more about what is Huga and then how do we practice it in our homeschool. I'm going to give you some resources too and then we'll have some final thoughts and I would love to hear you know from you if you have some thoughts if you have questions um, and I did have some people answer questions and I really appreciated that. So before I go into my slides, I want to talk a little bit about the answers that people put um, in the group today when I ask and talk a little bit about what brought comfort to or what brings comfort and coziness to uh, people in our group. So you may already be practicing Hugan. I have a feeling you probably are, even if you don't know it yet. So some of the things that were mentioned are exactly excellent ways to implement Huga. 
uh, clear the calendar. Um, there were people who talked about that and that is true. It's more about being at home and being comfortable and cozy and not filling your day so full every day that you can't enjoy your home because when you're home, you're always stressed and worried. So part of that does come with clearing that calendar, which is, I think, especially important going into the holiday season when sometimes we tend to overbook just a little bit. Um, so clear that calendar. Other things that were mentioned were hot tea, hot coffee. Um, if you, <laughs> Excuse me, if you don't drink tea or coffee, hot chocolate. It doesn't even have to be a hot drink. Um, if a glass of water makes you feel comfy and cozy, that's fine too. Uh, but a lot of times we do have thoughts about warm drinks because this is a season of, you know, winter. And so people are starting to think about those kind of things. Soups can be very Huga and someone mentioned that. Time with family and time with friends. And we'll talk about some specific things that you might do to um, kind of foster that uh, connection and intimacy with family and friends. Uh, crocheting, someone mentioned, that's definitely, um, you know, a huga practice. Uh, music, uh, certain music, some people may like classical music right now. Some people may like holiday music. Huga to you could be rock music. It could be country music. Um, it can be very individualize what is huga to you might not be huga to someone else so it can be very personalized too um holidays someone mentioned holidays being huga and that is a very good time for connecting with family even if you have a large family maybe you can you know create some traditions within that to spend time with smaller sections of your family too Cool evenings, very huga, right? You can curl up with that blanket, read a book, watch TV, drink your hot drink or your cold drink, whatever it is. Outdoor spaces, definitely spending time outdoors in nature. That is very huga like too. So you don't always have to be indoors. Cool mornings. And this was mentioned a few times too. And this is an important part of Huga as well. Uh, less is more. You don't need a lot. Uh, sometimes too many things can keep something from being Huga because you have so much stuff that you can't just relax and kind of take a breath, right? And enjoy what you have around you. All right. So I'm going to take us to a little bit more of the specifics now. So what is Huga? We talked about it being an atmosphere or experience. It's the art of creating intimacy. So you're having that connection with people. Um, and if you're by yourself, you can also practice Huga too, because you can connect with yourself and just learn how to be alone and find peace. Uh, if you can ever get that time, sometimes those are all hard times to come by, right? Uh, so you think too about cultivating warmth and comfort. And Huga is a practice from Denmark. This word does not have a direct translation into English. But if we were to, uh, you know, try to explain it in English, uh, Huga would be the Danish art of creating coziness. It's about enjoying the good things in life and surrounding yourself with love. And that's not just things you love, but people you love too. Uh, so I've got this book that I will reference some during our class. And it's also like I put it on our slides when we talk about resources. But this one is the little book of Huga. And it is by Mike Wiking, and its little subtitle is Danish Secrets to Happy Living. And Denmark does score high every year, sometimes number one, um, but if not number one, like in the top three to five for overall happiness. And they really kind of started this practice of Huga during their winter months, which can last from like November to
to March. Uh, some people even describe Denmark as having two winners, one green and one gray. So they are spending a great deal of time indoors. So they've become pretty much experts at creating this uh, atmosphere of coziness and comfort that we can reproduce in our own homes. So there is <clears throat> something in this book called the Huga Manifesto, and it keeps everything kind of streamlined and you can, uh, you know, one suggestion in this book is to print these things out and put them on your refrigerator um, just so you can find a quick moment in the day, at least a little moment to practice some Huga. Atmosphere, you want to turn down the lights. So I have like my big light on right now so you can all see me, right? But if I didn't have to be seen, I could just have my twinkle or fairy lights so i'll kind of lift that up that's more you know huga like uh salt lamps right the himalayan salt lamps create that soft glow because you don't want that glaring light right candles but you just have to be careful with those right but you can get also candles that have the little you know where you can just put the led lights in them too but there's something very nice about actual candles whether they're scented or not, just, you know, be careful, right? And watch out for, you know, fire hazards. Presents, here's the big one, uh, but I don't want to make anybody feel bad. Certainly, you know, during this time in which we are and have been living, but be present in the moment, right? Sometimes turn off the phones and talk to the people in the room with you. Um, pleasure is part of who get too. A lot of times that can be connected with food. And because we're talking about these winter months, right, and it's very cold, um, we're talking to a lot of these hygge like foods will be breads and desserts and things like that. Um, this says coffee, coffee, chocolate, cookies, cakes, candy, gimme, gimme, gimme. So all the carbs, right, because you got to stay, you got to stay nourished in the winter gratitude right this practice of being grateful um <laughs> i don't know how i feel about this line in the book but it has honestly helped me through uh recent times that we've been dealing with gratitude take it in this might be as good as it gets i really need that sometimes right mm -hmm. being thankful for whatever you know i'm not saying be thankful for these terrible things but find a way to be content yeah practice comfort and coziness even in those times right because it might be it is what it is right harmony too this one kind of makes me laugh it's not a competition if you've gathered together for an evening of who go with friends and family nobody needs to hear you brag about your accomplishments you know you can share some good news of course people are happy for you but you know what i'm talking about you know the people who tend to a little bit uh too much right you yeah. don't want that you want to share space with everyone everyone should have a chance to contribute to the conversation comfort right cozy blankets a comfortable atmosphere um take a break it's about relaxing don't get too caught up and you know is everything looking perfect is everybody having a good time what if they see the dust on my ceiling fans what if they look at my baseboards right don't worry right the lights are turned low anyway right so there you go yeah. and don't worry about that just relax uh truce Another time, right, is the time, if ever, to talk politics and stuff like that. When you are having an evening of Uga, nobody needs to be talking about that. You need to just be relaxing, taking it in, right? Now is not the time to discuss it. Togetherness, you're going to enjoy building relationships with people. Shelter, you're giving them that comfortable place. You're making them feel welcome because Huga is about being warm and it's about being welcoming and making sure also when you're having these conversations that everyone has a chance to 
contribute, right? You want to interact with people and you want to listen to what other people have to say. So that's kind of um, a pretty lengthy explanation about different aspects of HUGA. And so I want to talk now a little more specifically about cultivating it in our homeschool. So a lot of homeschoolers will do a poetry and tea time and you can do coffee, you can do hot chocolate, you can do lemonade, whatever it is that speaks comfort to you. And this can be very seasonal too, whereas right now you may be thinking more along the lines of something like hot chocolate or tea for your kids. Um, or you may, you know, be thinking it was kind of warm part of the day to day. It may still be a lemonade day, right? It can be ice cream just because we call it poetry tea time doesn't mean it has to be tea, right? Uh, blankets and books. Now is a good time of the year to get some really comfy blankets, get some books uh, for different ages in your house, put them in a big basket in your living room, right? So that your kids and you too, right? You too can go grab a blanket and a book and sit down and read. Um, and we'll talk some about read alouds too, because reading aloud is also a really great way of bringing Huga into your homeschool. Comfy clothing, which we, a lot of us have probably mastered that pretty well, right? Um, so you're thinking more along the lines of sweats and yoga pants and comfy leggings, right? Like I never understand when people say, oh, my comfort outfit is jeans and a t-shirt. I don't find jeans to be that comfortable. I like my leggings and my sweats and yoga pants and things like that. But if jeans are what you find comfortable, then by all means you wear your jeans, right? But to me, comfort is all about <laughs> loose clothes and uh, clothes I don't have to button, but that's a whole other thing, right? I've been a uh, I've been enjoying some of those uh, nourishing foods, right? And that's okay. <laughs> and speaking of food, baking, right? Baking is a very huga like thing to do. You're also going to have conversations when you're baking, conversations with your kids. Um, you can have people come over. And I would suggest, you know, especially if your kitchen is small, maybe have a couple of people over mm -hmm. or maybe, you know, Four people, I don't know. You kind of decide where you'd be comfortable. But bake together, cook a dinner together. Everybody brings some ingredients. Everybody, you know, gets in the kitchen and you all cook something. It might be easier instead of doing a whole meal to do like a cookie thing. And that would be good to do this time of year when people are thinking about, you know, Christmas cookies and holiday cookies of all kinds. Just have a, you know, party where you come and bake cookies. You can do something easier too and just do like a cookie exchange and everybody comes and they bring their cookies and they bring the recipe and you exchange recipes and you enjoy each other's cooking so it doesn't have to be anything that's going to cost a great deal of money either because that's not what you know Huga is all about you're going to spend time with family and with friends candles we talked about that you can read by candlelight um one of the most i think magical experiences for me and i know it was for my kids who were homeschooled and are now grown was we were studying um edgar Allan poe one october and so i woke them up at midnight and we went into our dining room and we read some edgar Allan poe by candlelight and there was something very magical about that, about getting up and, you know, going into the dining room at night. And your house looks different at night. It's got a different quality to it. And it just suited the mood really well for um, Edgar Allan Poe. So you can think about doing things like that. Um, yeah, Jennifer, actually, um, one of our group members mentioned that they like to do learning by the fireplace mm -hmm. in the evening. And okay. that that's a wonderful way to do it. I, I think that's perfect for this time of year. You know, I think, oh, that's that sounds perfect. That is definitely that natural warmth, right, and light of the fire. I don't have a fireplace in my house now. I wish I did. But one thing you can do if you don't, I know they have like these like 
fireplace things you mm -hmm. can do we do a fire pit outside too and then you know if there's not another thing that you have um youtube i know has some really nice atmosphere mm -hmm. type videos that can run on a loop and there's a good crackling fireplace and i have uh, put that on while i was in my office reading and working so i could you know hear the sounds yeah. right? so yeah there there are ways we can do that but yes a fireplace is really really nice and that is a great thing to do in the evening spending time together um by the fireplace very huga like um the twinkly or fairy lights that i mentioned um also help to you know give some light but not be too overwhelming outdoor time you can do nature walks um you can do picnics outside you can you know just sit outside and talk or look around just seeing the things that you don't usually take time to notice um designate a special screen free times we talked a little bit about that with um you know getting off your phones but also times too where you're doing something other than watching tv with that being said however it's also very who like to do movie nights um and i'll talk about some specific movies in just a minute that fit in really well for this time of year you can do game nights uh, that's another, you know, way of practicing Huga. In homeschool, you could learn with games. You can watch movies, uh, you know, based on the things that you're studying. Scents, different scents are, you know, appealing to, you know, different people. Mm -hmm. Like some people like the smell of vanilla or cinnamon. And then some people like, you know, something a little more, fruity like um apple and then you have people that would prefer to have candles with no scents at all because they're very sensitive so they want candles you know that don't have that scent uh but the thing is for scents too if you can't do candles you know, there are some natural things you can do that can bring scent into your home also if you're baking then you're going to you know have the sense of baking which is very hygge like and comforting and cozy you know you pull those of fresh homemade chocolate chip cookies out of the oven everybody can smell those pretty much and you'll be uh you know having your kids around eating the cookies and sharing um thoughts then we have traditions uh, you may already have traditions for this time of year especially that may already be very hygge like and you didn't realize it um, so you can think about those what are the traditions that you do um, when i was growing up uh, my family always had a candle lit christmas eve dinner that was the tradition i don't know why it started but every year, my sister, my mom and dad and I would have our Christmas Eve dinner by candlelight. And that's something that I still do with my family and have been doing. And so we all, you know, are at the table together eating Christmas Eve dinner by candlelight. So we know once that, you know, we have our conversations, we enjoy our time. Right after that, everybody kind of works together and we clean the kitchen up and then we go open a few presents. So you may already be doing things like that and you don't quite realize that you've been, you know, doing this Hugo like stuff all along. And then you have crafts, uh, spending time together. Uh, it can be, like we said, too, something that's more, you know, complicated like crocheting, but it can be crafts that are as simple as drawing or coloring or making ornaments together. I mean, there are a lot of different things. Just think about what it is that your family enjoys doing together and then think about ways to bring that into homeschooling because we know a lot of times, depending on, you know, what kind of teachers we are and what kind of uh, learner our children are, and we would like to do crafts anyway. Some kids learn better that way. But if your kids are more of the book kind, then... We fit that right in, too, with reading um, and spending that time together and read aloud or, you know, all reading together silently. Maybe you do that 
right after lunch every day. I know some families will do that. They'll have like a quiet time and everybody reads a book or, you know, sometimes takes a nap, uh, which naps are very hygge too. Get comfy, get cozy, fall asleep. There you go. <laughs> a lot of us probably do that. So with this next slide, these are some of the books um, that I've used. I showed you my favorite personally is the little book of Huga, which is the one that I'm using uh, for a lot of the resources I have tonight. But um, there are some other good books too. Huga, Discovering the Danish Art of Happiness, Making Winter, a Huga inspired guide to surviving the winter months. That one's really helpful um, in particular, you know, as you can see for the winter time. And as you kind of go through that January or February blues part of homeschooling. And then the book of Huga, The Danish Art of Contentment, Comfort, and Connection. And those are some of the Huga books I suggest. There's also one that I don't, I don't have it, but I've read about it. Um, and I'd like to get it at some point, but it's uh, called either like the Huga Art of Parenting or the Danish Way of Parenting. But I will look that up again and get that specifically um, because I think that sounds very helpful because if we are bringing Huga into our homes and it's, you know, helping us to cultivate this atmosphere of warmth and comfort and coziness, then I would love to know that we could do that as parents too, um, to create that same kind of atmosphere in our relationships with our children. So I will look that up and make sure to get that uh, right title to uh, Devin or Susan. Um, then read aloud books. These are just some suggestions. I did not put ages on here specifically because I'm of the, uh, you know, belief that if it's a good book, it's still going to be enjoyed by teenagers, even if it was written for children, right? And so sometimes you can bring your entire family together and your older kids can also enjoy picture books. It's perfectly fine. Um, I actually encourage parents to use picture books uh, to teach uh, some difficult concepts in high school, whether it be uh, you know, poetry or literary devices, um, because they can pick up those, you know, meanings and find out what things mean a lot easier if they're looking at material that is easier to understand. Then you can bridge over to, you know, a tale of two cities and things like that. Um, but I suggest for wintertime reading, and I kind of focus here on winter, being that we are speaking in this workshop about winter specifically. Um, so these will all be things that would fit really nicely for winter. The Mitten by Jan Brett, which is a picture book. Owl Moon by Jane Yolen, which I read to my kids when they were little. And they have vivid memories of Owl Moon. It's a beautiful book. Um, and it's a book about spending time with a parent and being outdoors in nature. And so I think um, that it can be enjoyed by all members in the family. The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis, uh, right? It's always winter and never Christmas because of the White Witch. That one is a fantastic book for winter time because of the imagery that um, is taking place there. Also, you could think, too, um, of the Snow Queen. If you want to look at fairy tales, the Snow Queen is a good book also. Um, Norse mythology is good for winter time because it's, you know, already about that Scandinavian region uh, where it's cold and wintry. And so that's a good time if you're doing mythology with your students to focus on Norse during the winter. And then the Lord of the Rings trilogy. That's... Um, heavily inspired by Norse mythology, and it's a good time to read these books or watch the movies in the winter time. Um, then poetry collections. I really love the Poetry Tea Time Companion by Julie Bogart and Nancy Graham. It has poetry for all seasons in it, so you can look for one that's going to be 
you know, this section is going to be more specifically geared toward autumn or winter, but then you can have the book for year round also. And not only does that book contain poems, but it also has a little bit of information about each poet and a couple of uh, questions that you can ask about the poem. So that's a good way to have a discussion after you read that's um, more relaxed and laid back than, you know, some kind of, you know, drilling to your kids about what was here in the poem and what was this. It's more of a relaxed kind of um, free flow exchange of ideas there. Uh, Robert Frost writes a lot of nature poetry and a lot of his poems are about autumn and winter. Uh, because he was writing about the New England locale, which is where he spent, you know, most of his life. And so You Come To is a collection of his poetry that's really good for winter. And then there is A Mind of Winter, <clears throat> Poems for a Snowy Season. And these poems are selected by Robert Atwan. So it's a mix of different poets. But as you can see, you know, every poem in that particular collection is about winter. And then I uh, also like this book that I have here. Um, and this one is a nature poem for every day of the year. And this cover is just beautiful. And when it says every day of the year, it really has a poem for every day of the year. And there's another one that I don't have yet, but I'm going to get at some point, a nature poem for every night of the year. So you could do your read aloud, you know, poem in the morning, and then you would have also one that you could do at night uh, during the winter, especially around the fire, right? Uh, if you're already by the fireside doing some learning at night, that's a good time to add in a poem. And then movies, uh, cuddling up, watching movies together, having movie discussions, because a lot of times, too, that is something that I think we as parents may not think about, is that those same devices that we see in works of literature that we're looking at in books are also in a lot of movies, too. Um, whether the movie's based on a book or not, a lot of those same devices will be there. Irony um you know characterization just you know everything pretty much that you can see in uh literary devices book wise you can find in movies too and you want to keep it casual right because we're talking about comfort and coziness so it can be just a casual conversation you know after you watch a winter holiday movie right um you could ask, you know, what what examples of humor did you see in a Christmas story? And your student could talk about, you know, the kid getting his tongue stuck to the light pole, right? Because he didn't believe it would happen. And, and then what does happen and what's, you know, ironic about what the teacher says when she's like, you should all be ashamed of yourselves. Your punishment, your guilt is far worse than any punishment you could ever receive. And of course, the little kid is like, you know, we know that's not true. That's something adults like to say, but we know it's always better not to get caught, right? And then you can also talk about, okay, now, was that the right way to be? No, it's funny, but, you know, so you could talk a little then to you about, you know, how we conduct ourselves and honesty and dishonesty and stuff like that. So even in something as simple as, you know, a holiday movie, you can bring in a lot of conversations that are learning moments that your kids may not quite even pick up on, you know, that that this is also a form of learning. Uh, the Harry Potter series is good for winter time because you have a lot of the movies uh, where they have the Christmas tie in. And so Hogwarts is all decorated for Christmas and there's snow. And so you can talk about that. Uh, White Fang, you know, the setting of that's good for a winter time. Frozen, you know, if you are not tired of Frozen or Frozen 2. I've seen Frozen. I have not seen Frozen 2. Um, but that's also very, very loosely based on uh, Hans Christian Andersen's The Snow Queen. But, I mean, it is a good winter time movie. And then a documentary that's a lot of fun to watch, too, is March of the Penguins. 
And so that takes place, of course, in the Arctic region. So it's already cold. And so you can do a little bit of science even. So there's, you know, a lot of things that can be incorporated that you may not have thought of before. And just my final thoughts, you know, are, you know, these are things to think about, like which aspects of Hugo most resonate with you. Maybe it's the reading aloud. Maybe it's the baking together. Um, whatever you feel, you know, is something that brings you the most comfort and coziness. You can start with those things and think about how you can incorporate these into your homeschool. Like we talked about games that can be related to what you're studying, uh, watching movies and talking about the plots and, you know, the developments of characters and things like that. Uh, you can also think about the traditions that you have in place now, and they may already be Huga. And if they're not quite what you would consider a Huga, then how can you fit Huga into those traditions that you already have? Uh, start simple, too. Don't try to do everything, you know, like wake up tomorrow and be like, we're going to bake and we're going to read aloud together and we're going to go do a nature walk and we're going to watch this movie and play this, you know, game and just don't overload yourself. You can start simple and be willing to adapt and change. You know, what you try might not work. Um, it might not work now, but maybe you could try it again later, or it might just not be something that's going to fit you and your family. So just be flexible and be willing to change where you might need to change. Um, and I will Stop that sharing now. That's <laughs> awesome. awesome. Thank you, you know, Jennifer. I was Thank thinking you. you're talking about, you know, sometimes what it, what you try doesn't fit on your final thoughts. And I was talking to a mama today, and I think it's important to remind people that what we want, we may want something, but sometimes we're not in the right season yet. Yeah. Because how I might do huga with littles will look very different when they're teenagers. And so you can work toward that what you want for them as they're teenagers, but just take your time making that, tr tr look at the long game. Yeah. Don't look at the short, short game, you know, that short game. So. Yeah. And I also think, um, you know, so many times as moms, we're looking for self-care. Mm -hmm. This is a great way to incorporate self-care in, and have your family involved, you know, so oftentimes we yes. think self-care has got to be done all by ourselves and we've got to be away from the family. And, but this is a great That's way a to kind point. of, to pull yourself back into peace and harmony and have a way to do it with your family and everybody is getting some self-care. Yes. That's a good habit a good for our kids to get, to get into and see that, you know, having this uh, way of, simply, you know, finding things to bring comfort and coziness to them will really help them also as they're getting older, because a lot of these things I didn't learn until I was older. Mm -hmm. This idea of huga and of putting these simple things into practice and just stopping to, you know, enjoy the simple things of life, but yet the things that can bring us mm -hmm. the most contentment. Exactly. And our kids today, there's so much stress for them. Yeah. You know, there's so much information coming at them from every different direction, cell phones and computer and TV and things like that. And this is a great time to start helping them to learn lifelong skills and to help reduce mm -hmm. that stress as they move into mm -hmm. adulthood. So them seeing you incorporating this into your home is, is fabulous. Yeah. I think there's I lots, a lot. of, lots of great ideas that we can incorporate. Absolutely. I loved it. It was a great job. It was. And for those of you that are watching, um, if you didn't, I, I don't know if you guys noticed or not, but I took a picture of, of Jennifer's slide of all her different ideas because I thought, oh, my gosh, that is, those are wonderful. So many so, wonderful things. Yeah. So if, if, you know, if you're watching Tonight Live um, or, you know, you can always rewind and, and go back to that or fast forward however and take a picture of it because there were some great ideas on there for yeah. everybody to you know just kind of get some ideas going as to what they might incorporate in their household 
and there's just so many so many resources if you're interested and you want to go find jennifer's resources also when I pulled up um, Hoopla, if your library has it, our, ours does. There were tons of books and even books you can listen to on audio. So tons of resources out there so you can dive deeper and get ideas if you don't know. Or you can, you know, PM Jennifer. She'll give you some ideas. Absolutely. Yeah, to and help. We'll talk you down from the wall and, you know, remind you that you don't have to do every idea. You can just pick one or two. Yeah. yeah, and if you guys have ideas um, of what what you've incorporated in your household, yeah. Yeah. Um, or you know what you might even want to try, maybe you haven't incorporated it yet, but you might want to try it. Drop us a note and let us know because this is all about helping one another and yeah. really growing. And so, if you have some ideas, we'd love to hear them. Yes, you can even join with other you know, homeschool moms and have a little small group that may meet in your home one week or one month, depending on how often you want to do it. And then the next meeting can be in someone else's home. Mm -hmm. And maybe your home is more equipped for having everyone baking together. And then you can do that if that's your thing. If having a bunch of people in your kitchen baking stuff makes you like want to kind of go bury your head and hide, you can do read alouds in your home. You can yeah. you know, be the one that reads. You can do you know, you can host the crafts, you can host the outdoor time. So that's a way too of gathering mm -hmm. with your friends and it doesn't have to cost a lot of money. Everybody, yeah. you know, pitch in a little bit of something or pitch in, you know, just a small amount of money, maybe to cover craft supplies. So that's something too that's that a you great idea. About too, um, is spending that time in small groups like that. I love it. Great that. ideas, wonderful ideas. Jennifer, this is awesome. Thank you. Well, I have enjoyed it. Um, I know, we appreciate it. Yeah, book clubs are fun too. I'm just sitting here thinking about maybe, you know, elementary kids, but uh, especially middle and high school kids, you could all, you know, you could have a book club and everybody's reading the same book and then they get together at different houses and discuss it. So you can go all kinds of ways with this, uh, you know, art of coziness and togetherness right yeah and what what it looks like at somebody else's house doesn't have to look the same at my house and it's all about just being what makes you comfy and cozy and happy absolutely <laughs> yeah. okay mamas well if nobody is posted i am going to tell y'all good night jennifer we are so glad you're with us again it's been a while it has. I know it has. Oh. I've enjoyed being here. I enjoy being with y'all. Yeah. We well, love thank it. you. We loved it. Awesome. Awesome information. So thank you, Jennifer. You're well, welcome. Y'all have a great night. Let us know what, let, let us know your favorite tea, tea, post your favorite tea or your favorite. Ooh. Cause yes. I baked cookies this week. If y'all missed that, that was total hygge. Me and Lisey bake, baking cookies. Mm -hmm. So, but post your favorite tea. I'm looking for new new tea bags to put in my closet because that's what we do around here. We were tea people. Anyway, good night, mamas. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye, everyone.